Hello friends. Let's talk about all of the books that I purchased or was sent and received in the month of March. I feel pretty happy this month that it's quite a smaller size haul compared to normal just because you guys know I'm trying to focus on reading what I have or buying books for a specific purpose. I think that when I joined Bookstagram, I was like, I need everything I see. I need all of these books. They look amazing. Everyone's talking about them. Everyone else has them. I want to own them too. And don't get me wrong, you're going to see a bookstagram pile haul in here as well. But I'm just trying to sort of add those books to a list now. And then when I'm ready to, to read them, I will purchase them at that point. I'm going to do my best to do that. It's not always going to happen, but I just tried to not go quite as crazy. So there are 22 books to share with you guys today. I've sort of separated them into categories of how I bought or received them. So let's go over that first. The two that I'm keeping from the book of the month box that they sent me, I will share with you guys the other ones I give away to friends or family that I think might enjoy them. So I gave the majority to my sister this month because she was really interested in a lot of the titles. So the two that I want to check out, one is The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. The reason I'm keeping this is because my sister wants to buddy read it with me. She chose this as her book of the month book last month. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. And she read the synopsis and thought I would like it. And we're trying desperately to find things to buddy read together recently just because we're having a hard time finding something that we both want to read. So I did keep this. And then I also kept Tell Me Everything, The Story of a Private Investigation by Erica Krauss. This is, I think, a nonfiction memoir about true crime. It is a story of a landmark sexual assault investigation and the female private investigator who helped crack it open. And so I want to read more nonfiction all the time. And this sounds like something I would really enjoy. So I definitely wanted to keep that. So these are the two book of the month that I plan to read. Now, you guys are the absolute sweetest. Sometimes when I express that I'm not doing so well or am not in the greatest place. I get book mail and you guys always brighten my day and never ever ever feel like you have to do that. If you guys have been following my vlogs, you'll know I've had a really bad eating disorder relapse and then my dad's been in the hospital and it has been a really hard, 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 hard march. Um, just trying to survive day to day. Basically, actually that's too much of a stretch. I'm trying to survive moment to moment, but a friend from Patreon sent me the Thrawn trilogy. So book one is Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. This is the Essential Legends collection. Book two is Dark Force Rising and book three is The Last Command. So I'm super excited to own these now and now I can get to the Thrawn trilogy whenever I feel like it. I don't know if there's audiobooks to these. I generally listen to my Star Wars books because I love reading Star Wars books but these nice floppy paperbacks are absolutely perfect to read from if there are no audiobooks. So thank you so much. It brightened my day a ton to come home to these and I can't wait to read more Star Wars. You alone have purely been feeding my Star Wars addiction and collection. So thank you. Um, now a couple other books. These are from Read Becca, Read Becca. Please leave a comment so I can respond to you personally because I didn't know where to contact you. But the first one I'm really excited about. So thank you so much for both of these is All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Toes. And I had never heard of this book and it sounds like something I will really love. It says, wrenchingly honest, darkly funny. So I'll read this really quickly. It says, elite Elf is a world-renowned pianist, glamorous, wealthy, and happily married. Her sister Yoli is recently divorced, broke, with two teenagers growing out of her control. And yet, despite the different paths their lives have taken, the sisters remain fiercely close, a bond forged in a Mennonite childhood spent under the shadow of their father's depression. But the family curse has never lifted for Elf. And when she attempts suicide just before an international tour, Yoli must try to hold together her fracturing family while facing a profound question. What do you do for a loved one who truly wants to die? And having um, family that has had to try to do that for me 
Um, I think that it's going to be very personal and really resonate with me. And I'm just really excited to read this because it has great blurbs too. So let me know if you've read this. Thank you so much for sending me this book I've never heard of. That sounds just up my alley. And they also sent me this, which I'm so excited for. I have wanted to own this edition for a while. This is Slouching Towards Bethlehem by Joan Didion. I'm slowly growing my Joan Didion collection, as you'll see in this haul. It says the essential portrait of America and California in particular during the 60s, the remarkable debut essay collection by one of the most distinctive prose stylists of our era. It explores such subjects as John Wayne and Howard Hughes, growing up in California, the nature of good and evil in a Death Valley motel room in San Francisco. So it's just her her exploration and examination of the 60s and 70s America. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading this. And this is such a beautiful copy. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, you guys, both of these, both of you guys for these. I am so thankful. And oh, don't you just love her? Next, let's get to the pile of books that I've already read, which is actually quite large and makes me feel great. So eight of the books that I purchased this month, I have already read. The ones I read previously this year and not so recent, I pre-ordered this from Target in a sale and it finally came in because I love this edition so much more than the other edition. So I wanted the paperback. And this is The Promise by Damon Galga. This won the Booker International. Yeah, this was the international winner, I think, of 2021. I'll link my wrap up down below. I think I read it in December. I don't know, but it was beautiful and really want to read more from this author in the future. But I needed to own this copy, not the other one. Now, my very first book of the year was White Tears, Brown Scars, How White Feminism Betrays Women of Color by Ruby Hamad. This was an excellent nonfiction book that I listened to, so I wanted to own the physical copy as well. This was similar to Hood Feminism, with some other concepts in it as well. Hamad builds a powerful argument about the entrenched systems of white supremacy that we are socialized within, a reality that we must apprehend in order to fight. And there's just a lot of history in this and a lot of things that I actually learned quite a bit from. So this, this was a great read. I definitely recommend this nonfiction and it was a great audiobook. I also purchased, after listening to My Dark Vanessa, the hardback copy by Kate Elizabeth Russell. And I recently found that there's like this amazing paperback with um, the girl with red hair on the cover. And I wish I owned that one instead, but this is still a beautiful cover. So this is about a relationship um, between a student and her professor. It is very hard hitting and really affected me a lot more than I thought it would. Brought up a lot of memories that I didn't remember until I read this, but I thought it was brilliant. Probably one of my favorite things I've read this year and I definitely recommend it. So I had to own that. Another one that I purchased because I listened to it is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. And this is one that I had been wanting to read for quite some time because of the cover, which this one's damaged and it makes me a little bit upset. But this I have such torn feelings on. I'll talk about it in my wrap up. So I won't do that here. We're following a woman who has an eating disorder. And that is like the main portion of this. And then it is also about her romantic relationship slash friendship with another Orthodox Jewish woman and how that affects her eating disorder, affects everything else in her life, her family relationships. So it is, mm, I'll wait for my, my wrap up to go into it. But yeah, loved parts of it really disliked other parts of it, but definitely worth reading in my opinion, and I'm glad I own it. I once again love this cover. And then a hard little book to hunt down that was our Patreon buddy read for March is Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance. Please, I know I've said it in my vlogs, please, who made this cover? Like, I'm not trying to hate on you, but why did this ever get approved for like the font and cover? Like, Please somebody validate my criticisms because I don't understand how this is a book cover. I could make this on PowerPoint in three seconds, in negative three seconds. I don't know. I just hate everything about the cover. And I'm like, I didn't even like the book. So now that I own it, I'm just annoyed. <laughs> it's not a bad book. We're following Waylon Gray, who is this little boy with perhaps magical capabilities. This is a magical realism novel. And he has, he definitely leaves an impression on everyone he meets throughout his life. So it is a very fast paced book. We are spanning a long period of time. 
We have a lot of side characters that come in and out of his life. There's never really a time where you spend a long time with one person. So there's a lot of reasons this didn't work well for me. But if you are looking for something lighthearted and kind of sweeter on the softer side, not too emotionally heavy um, or thematically heavy, then you might wanna give this a go. But once again, I'm still bitter about owning this. And the last one that I just randomly purchased, actually a friend read this and when my relapse was starting and I couldn't even think in coherent sentences, this is the only thing I could listen to after DNFing like 16 audiobooks, and that is Little Scratch by Rebecca Watson. So I do recommend getting yourself a copy of this because the inside is very chaotically written. And that is why I was able to read it because you, it's stream of consciousness. Try to see if you can get the audiobook from your library like I did, but I wish that I was able to read it physically while listening to it. And I, one thing I think is interesting is by listening, I was able to know exactly how she wanted this read, whereas some friends who read it you don't exactly know. So I don't know. I just think it was a unique experience, but holy cow, I love this. This is dealing with trauma from sexual assault, how that affects you as a person, how that affects your partner and your romantic relationships. And it's just some, it's a woman's thoughts from the beginning of her day to the end of her day. And like everything that you think, but you don't want to say, and you're glad to know that somebody else out there is also thinking the same thing somewhere. Um, I freaking love this. It was fabulous from start to finish and really resonated with me in a lot of the topics and not knowing what to say and not wanting to tell people. So I really, really want more people to read this. Two more that I purchased and have already read because I read Grace's Favorites in March. So these were just a couple books I chose from her favorites list in 2021, which mind you, I did purchase Hurricane Season, the Fitzcarraldo edition, but I returned it because I DNF'd it and I don't want to own that book. I don't even want to look at it. But first we have Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward. This is a book about Hurricane Katrina. It's not Hurricane Katrina. Which hurricane is it? Why does that name automatically come into my head? Anyways, it's dealing with a lot of family relationships. It's dealing with this girl's pregnancy and a lot of a lot of animal talk, a lot of animal abuse. Very mixed feelings about this, which I will go into further depth into in my wrap up. But yeah, definitely worth reading. Glad I own this, glad I read it. Will absolutely read more from this author in the future, but that is why I purchased this one. And yeah, it is a book that I recommend to particular people. Probably not everyone across the board because of the issues that I had with it as well, but one that I think is worth reading. And I guess I'm giving this away because no, I'll keep my thoughts. This is very sporadic. I am sorry. Can you see what it's like to be in my brain right now? Oh, deep breath. We all could use, let's, let's just all take a deep breath, okay? Deep breath. Okay, I also purchased Infinite Country by Patricia Engel for reading books that Grace loved last year. Spoiler, I loved it. It's absolutely fabulous. We're following this young girl as she is in this like, school prison and she escapes. She's trying to make her way to America from Colombia. But what I actually found is the more interesting perspective is her parents' backstory. So we follow multiple timelines. We follow um, the story of how they go from Colombia to America to begin with. And it was so beautiful. It made you think about so many important questions. It broke my heart. Cannot recommend this highly enough. Fabulous cover, so of course I had to buy it. Now we have the seven books that I purchased for specific reasons. The first two are at the fault of Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books talking about these. I absolutely love her channel. If you've not checked it out, I'll link it below. The first one, and I don't know too much about either of these. I just liked what she shared from them. So the first one is Pond by Claire Louise Bennett. I'm not even gonna try to read the blurb for this. It just sounds like something unique and different in comparison to what I have been reading lately. Something I really wanna check out. I've heard great things about this author as well. And it's like my perfect length of book right now too. So I really wanna try to get to this sooner rather than later. And I also was influenced to buy this partially based on the cover, but also based on something she shared from it. And that is Runaway by Alice Munro. And this is a short story collection, I believe. And I believe it's gonna be, have feminist themes. It is dealing with 
women and womanhood. So um, I'm really looking forward to reading this as well. Yeah, so there's the different stories in it. And I really don't know too much of what to expect, but I've never read from this author before. So let me know if you guys have read this. I'd be very curious. Want to get to that soon. And now the last stack is basically all influenced by Bookstagram. So we have five books here that are part of my little Bookstagram haul. And I don't regret buying any of them. I do hope to love them and I think that I will. But in the future, I'm gonna try to put them on a list and not just get click happy and buy them right away. So we have two more Joan Didion books. As I said, I'm trying to get a collection. So this one was purposeful. This one was already on my radar and my TBR before seeing it on Bookstagram, but I saw this cover on Bookstagram and I was like, that's the one. So The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. How freaking stunning is this orange and purple? So this is about grief, I believe. Her husband dying and her trying to deal with that. So um, that's all I know about it. So I think it is a memoir. Oh, I just opened this. These uh, modern classics. I own Other Minds. I've read that and I want that edition. Who's doing this for covers? You're brilliant. You, you keep doing you. Um, anyways, so I would really like to read this. This was part of my list of books to read in your 30s. Um, lots of people recommended this, so I want to get to this soon. I might do the audio for that, actually. But also, another Joan Didion is Play It As It Lays, and it says, Somewhere out beyond Hollywood, hollowed-out actress Maria Wayeth's life plays out in a numbing routine of perpetual freeway driving. In her early 30s, divorced from her husband, dislocated from friends, anesthetized to pain and pleasure, she is a woman who has run out of both desires and motives, the epitome of a generation made ill by too much freedom. That sounds fascinating. And I had to have this cover. <laughs> My boyfriend always comes over and he's like, another book with tits on the cover? Yes, it is, honey. Yes, it is. Um, I'm just obsessed with this edition. I think it's beautiful. I want it on my shelf. I love that this is a book cover and I'm really excited to read this book as well. So add it to the collection. And for you who commented, you forget I film on my knees. I do and I don't know why I do, but my feet, my legs are completely numb right now. It's not even funny. I think this might be the same edition, the same type of edition. I don't know, but I wanted to own this. This is a book that I've been wanting to read for some time and it might be featured in a video um, sometime this year. That is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. And I just know this is a love story, a summer of a love story. I've never seen the adaptation. People seem to like it and have good things to say about it. Like they're not the same, but they feel the same. I really like this split photograph with the um title above it type of thing so anyways i really wanted to own this versus the other edition and it's nice and short too i'm really looking forward to reading this you guys all thought i would like it when i mentioned it okay so one more when i saw this i just thought if there was a britney book it's this cover this title this book weird fucks by lynn tillman um and i just saw another book by this author that is similar but has like the lime green so just appreciate this and this is a brilliant novella from a legendary figure in American fiction. A young woman drifts through dimly lit bars and rented rooms, reporting from the erogenous zones of New York and Europe. Encountering increasingly bizarre sexual situations, she turns her curious, comic, and fierce eye onto the contemporary world of sex and desire. So I've read some reviews for this and it seems like something I will really enjoy. It's just this really short novella and I really can't wait to read this. And I'm just glad to own that. And then another one actually was the 2020 International Book Prize winner. And I'd never heard of this before seeing it on Bookstagram. So that is The Discomfort of Evening by Mariaki Lucas Rijneveld. Hope I'm saying that right. But this seems to be a very intense, like polarizing or shocking book. I know she asks, it's like she prays to God to kill her brother instead of the rabbit. This blurb on the back of this edition is different than the other ones I've read. It says 10 year old Jazz has a unique way of experiencing her, experiencing her universe. The feeling of utter ointment on her skin as protection against harsh farmyard winters, the texture of green warts like capers on migrating toads, the sound of blush words that aren't in the Bible. But when a tragic accident ruptures the family, her curiosity warps into a wild vortex of disturbing fantasies, unlocking all darkness that threatens to derail them. Well, this must be translated then, so let's see. Translated by Michelle Hutchinson. 
what is it translated from? Dutch? Translated from the Dutch, I think. So yeah, I, I just, I love this cover. I love the idea of how strange this sounds and it's one I really want to read. So this is the stack of books that I've not yet read minus the Star Wars one, but I can't hold up anymore. What of these do you think I will enjoy the most? Which should I prioritize in upcoming TBRs first? I'm dying to know. And uh, yeah, what do you guys think of these books if you've read them? Let's chat about it. Tell me what books did you get in the month of March? How many books? Zero books. Congrats on buying all the books or none of the books. I support you either way, sister. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.